I want to talk a bit about polygons and polytopes and how you might go about counting the number of symmetries they have. So what do I mean by a symmetry? I basically mean a transformation of the plane or of the space that this, this shape is living in that preserves the shape. So here's a triangle. It's supposed to be an equilateral triangle with three equal sides. Um, and the kinds of things I'm talking about are things like reflections. So take a reflection in this vertical line. That's clearly a symmetry of this triangle. Right? If I reflect in that line, the triangle maps back to itself. Similarly, if I reflect in uh, this line, the triangle's preserved. And similarly, if I reflect in this line, ooh, my drawing's not terribly good. Let's try and get it right. That's better. OK, if I reflect in that line, the triangle's preserved. So there's three more symmetries of this shape. What are they? Well, I have rotations, right? I've done three reflections here, but I could just as easily rotate. And if I rotate by 120 degrees, let's say anti-clockwise, this point goes to this point, this point goes to this point, and this point goes back to the first point. That's another symmetry of the triangle. What else could I do? I could rotate uh, by 240 degrees. That's another symmetry. I'm not going to draw all the arrows on. So there's a 120 degree rotation, there's a 240 degree rotation, and last of all, there's one more rotation I could do that preserves this shape, which is I don't rotate at all. Right, so if I just leave the shape as it is, so a zero degree rotation, or equivalently a 360 degree rotation, that is a symmetry of this shape, okay? It's a bit of a silly symmetry, it doesn't do anything at all, but I'm going to count that as one of my symmetries. Okay, so the total number of symmetries of this triangle is six, three rotational and three reflection symmetries. So here are some more shapes. Ta-da! Okay, so we've got a square, that's four equal sides, and a regular pentagon, that's five equal sides. So what I want you to do now is to pause the video, think about it for a minute, and then tell me how many symmetries each of these shapes has. So I'm going to tell you the answer in three, two, one. Okay, one you there's the answers. So for the square, we have these four lines of reflection, two through the corners, two through the uh, middles of the edges. We've also got four rotational symmetries. There's this thing where we don't rotate at all. There's this thing where we rotate by 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 240 degrees, and that's it. So that's a total of eight symmetries. And for the pentagon, we've got five lines of reflection through each of the, one through each of the vertices. And then we've got rotations through, well, 360 over five, which is 72, two lots of that, three lots of that, four lots of that. And again, this guy that does nothing, zero degree rotation. So this, this has a name, this is called the identity transformation. And it's always one of the symmetries we're going to count. So in total, how many do we have? Five reflections, five rotations, that makes 10. So you can see if we look at a regular polygon with n sides, we're going to end up with twice that many symmetries, two n symmetries. So if n is three, that gives us six for a triangle. n is four edges for a square, that gives us eight, etc. Of course, if I pick an irregular shape, I'm not going to get as many symmetries as I do for these very symmetric ones. For example, if I pick an isosceles triangle, um, where two of the edges have the same length and the third one is shorter, what are the possible symmetries? Well, I could swap those two edges with a, a reflection like this. Uh, what else could I do? Well, I could do nothing at all like a zero degree rotation, in other words the identity, I always have that 
in my symmetry group. So that gives me a total of two possible symmetries, reflection and the identity. If I had a scalene triangle where all three sides are different, I can't change the sides around at all. So all I can do is the identity. So in that case, I just have one symmetry. So how does this work in higher dimensions? Let's move up to 3D. Here's a cube that I drew earlier. How many symmetries does this cube have? Well, if you're anything like me, you're not going to be able to imagine what these symmetries look like, all of them at least. Some of them you can imagine. So you could imagine putting some kind of an axis through the cube like this. Maybe I'll do it a different colour. So this, you've got to imagine this is kind of entering the cube here and exiting the cube here. And then you could rotate around this axis by 90 degrees or actually 180 degrees or 240 degrees. And you could do that with any opposite pair of faces. So you get these sort of three axes of rotation. Okay, so that's good. That's some symmetries. But what's going to happen if you proceed this way is you're going to find some of the symmetries, maybe not all of them, and you're also not going to be able to tell if you've got all of them. It's going to be difficult to figure out if you've counted every single symmetry. So we need a more robust or systematic way of looking for symmetries. So the way we're going to approach this is perhaps best illustrated in a simple example first. So let's go back to the equilateral triangle. If you have some sort of inbuilt aversion to triangles, I do apologize. I know they come up a lot in maths at school, but it's because they're so simple and like illustrative. You know, we will get onto more interesting shapes, but this is, you know, useful. Um, so what are the symmetries of the triangle again? I'm going to do them in color this time. So here's a reflection in red. Um, Here's a reflection in blue, and here's a reflection in orange. I hope you can tell the colours apart. I apologise if not. Um, and let me draw on the, the three uh, rotations. So um, I'm going to do the identity transformation, which I'm now going to write as I. This is the zero degree rotation, the identity. Um, I can do that in blue. Um, the 120 degree rotation, I'm going to do that in orange. And then the 240 degree rotation, I'm going to do in red. OK. So the way I'm going to organize this is as follows. I'm going to start by labeling my vertices. I'm going to call them A, B, and C. And I'm going to say our, our symmetries fall into three classes. There's the class one symmetries. They're the ones that send A back to itself, fix the point A. There's class two symmetries. They send A all the way to B. And then there's class three symmetries. They're going to send A all the way over to C. So what are the symmetries that we've drawn here? We better give them names as well. Um, need to be careful we don't run out of letters here. Uh, let's call this reflection, the red reflection, I'm going to call A. No, sorry, R. I've already used A. Um, the blue reflection, I'm going to call S. And the orange reflection, I'm going to call T. And then um, what are some good names for rotations. I don't know. Let's let's use some Greek letters just for fun. Let's have uh, alpha is the red one. Uh, 
oh we've already got i for the blue one and so let's call beta the the orange one okay so what classes do these guys belong to what class does alpha belong to alpha sends vertex a all the way over to c so it's class 3 beta sends a all the way over to b so that is class 2 the identity what does that do well nothing it just leaves a where it is so that's class 1 okay what about the reflections the red reflection r um, sends a over to c so that's in class 3 uh, the blue reflection s that actually that line of reflection passes through a so a is fixed so that's class 1 and um, t the orange reflection uh, that sends a to b so that's class 2 okay so i chose the colors uh, to match the classes um, it took me a couple of goes in recording this to get it right so um, in other words we partitioned our symmetries into three sets of symmetries there's a blue class an orange class and a red class and they're defined according to where they send the vertex a they either send it to itself they send it to b or they send it to c so let's do that for the uh for the cube let's pick a vertex let's call that vertex a and let's label the other vertices as well b c d's right at the back there e f g and h there's eight vertices of a cube so we'll get eight classes of symmetry of symmetries in other words our symmetries have one of eight types uh, what types are they well there's the ones that send a to b there's the ones that send a to c a to d a back to a a to f a to g a to e and a to h i could have done that in a more alphabetical way okay so now what we need to know is how big are these classes of symmetries in this example of the triangle there were three classes each class had size two there were two symmetries in each class and that tells us that the total number of symmetries is six so three classes of size two gives six in total so here we've got eight classes of symmetries what's the size of each class Well, the first thing to note is that in this example of the equilateral triangle, all three classes have the same size, and that's not a coincidence. The same is going to be true for the cube, and the same is going to be true in a huge amount of generality. Basically, whenever you can get from A to another vertex, let's say F, the class of symmetries that send A to A has the same size as the class of symmetries that send A to F. Let me write that down. So in fact, if there's a symmetry, let's call it capital R, sending A to B. So A and B are now kind of placeholders. They, they don't have to be the A's and B's in this uh, these two diagrams. It's just in a completely general setting. So if there's a symmetry R sending A to B, then the class of symmetries that send A to A has the same size as the class of symmetries sending A to B. Okay. If there's no symmetry sending A to B, we don't know. But in all these cases that I've drawn above, this equilateral triangle you can and this, this cube, you can certainly get from A to B, you can get from A to C, you can get from B to C, just by rotating. Right? And similarly for this cube, you can get from A to wherever you want in this diagram 
just by rotating for any of these letters. So this is the useful fact we need, because now with this fact in, in hand, and we'll, we'll justify the fact in a second, but with this fact in hand, we know that the number of symmetries is just the number of classes times the size of the class. In the same way here, we have three classes, all size two, that gave a total of six. Up here, we've got eight classes. Each class has a certain size, and from that we'll be able to deduce the size of the symmetry group. So let's go back down to the fact. How do we prove this? How do we justify this fact? Oh, it's kind of a nice, it's a nice argument. Let's suppose that we've got this symmetry that takes A to B. And let's suppose that I've got a symmetry that takes A to A. Let's give it a name. Let's call it T. Actually, maybe I'm going to stick with, um, you know, for this proof, I'm going to stick with capital letters for symmetries. Okay, so given a symmetry that takes A to A and a symmetry that takes A to B, I get a new symmetry taking A to B. What is it? Well, it's the result of first doing T and then doing R. I'm going to write that as R circle T. This circle means compose. Composition of symmetries. You first do T, you then do R. It's like, func like composition of functions, if you know what that means. It literally just means first do T, then do R. So R itself, of course, is of this form. It's R composed with the identity. So in other words, for any symmetry that preserves A, we get something that goes from A to B just by sticking R compose in front of it. Now we have to be slightly careful. This looks pretty convincing, right? For anything sending A to A, I get something sending A to B. But we have to be careful we're not overcounting symmetries and we have to be careful we're not undercounting symmetries. In other words, what do I mean by overcounting? Well, maybe two symmetries sending A to A that are different give you the same arrow from A to B. In other words, what happens if R composed T1 equals R composed T2? Well, it's not too hard to imagine. You could just undo this R on the left-hand side of each expression and you actually would get that T1 equals T2. So we're not overcounting. Right, so two different t's would have to give us different r composed t's, otherwise this wouldn't hold. And we have to make sure we're not undercounting. In other words, we have to make sure that any arrow from a to b has this form for some for some t. Um, but that's also okay because, given um, what letter should I use now? What about um, uh, s? Given s going from A to B, you could undo R after doing S. So I'm going to write this as R inverse composed S. In other words, you do S and then you do R backwards. So S will take you from A to B and then R inverse will take you back again. So then this is uh, a symmetry of the, of the class A goes to A. So if we just give this whole thing a name, call it T, then this tells us that R composed T equals S. So we're not undercounting symmetries either. We get all the possible arrows from A to B this way. Okay, so the output of this is all classes have the same size, as long as we can get from any vertex to any other vertex. So coming back to our cube, we have to answer the question, what is the size of a class, right? We have eight classes of symmetries. How big are those classes? And that will tell us how many symmetries we have in total. And we only need to figure out the size of the first class, sending A to A. So how many symmetries of a cube 
are there that fix one vertex? Well, here's a fresh cube because the other one was getting a bit messy. And here I'm going to center this on this vertex A. This is going to be A here. So how many symmetries fix A? Well, you can start to imagine some of them a bit better now. You could imagine taking um, an axis of rotation that goes from A to this opposite corner down here and rotating around. And what's that going to do? Well, it's going to do something like this. It's going to permute these three edges, like rotate, rotate, rotate by 120 degrees. So there's at least three. Right, there's the... Uh, 120 degree, 240 degree, and 0 degree rotations around that axis. And actually that's it for rotations. Any other rotation would have an axis, and that axis would have to contain A if, um, if it was going to be a symmetry. So it would have to be this one. Uh, so uh, because there are, I should say, all the, ax all the axes have to go through the origin, which is in the middle of the cube. That always has to be fixed. So, um, so there's only three possible rotations, and actually there's only three possible reflections as well. So if you reflect in 3D, you need a, f a plane of reflection. And you can imagine there's a, it's a bit difficult to draw, but if you take this plane, maybe I should, I'll do a different color. I'll do it in pink. Hope that shows up. Okay, that's a vertical plane passing through two of the edges of the cube, including A. That reflection, reflection in that plane, is a symmetry that preserves A. And you can imagine there's another two like this. So here's one in orange. This reflection. And uh, let's see if I can draw it. I, I do apologise to anyone who is not a fan of colours. Um, so here's a light blue plane. Okay, so there's another plane, a third plane of reflection. And again, it's going to turn out that's everything. So the answer will be six. So, but you don't have to think quite that hard, right? So you're not necessarily going to spot those planes of uh, symmetry. Um, so here is an, an, um, an easier way of thinking about it. Let's really just look at A. This is the vertex A, and a small neighbourhood of it. Now... There's a certain threeness about this, right? It looks a bit like a triangle. So what I'm going to draw is um, I'm going to draw a triangle like this. Oops. A triangle like this. This is called the vertex figure of A. It's what I would get if I went a little way into the cube and sliced off a corner in as symmetric way as I could, I would get this, this triangle. It's called a vertex figure. And being a triangle, it has six symmetries. And certainly any symmetry that preserves A is going to preserve the vertex figure at A. right? So it's going to be a symmetry of this triangle. So we can have at most six symmetries that fix A. And here in this picture we can see there are exactly six symmetries. In this, this first picture, I told you what the symmetries were. So this is a maybe a more systematic way of looking for the symmetries that fix a vertex. You take the vertex figure, that tells you sort of at most how many symmetries you can have, and you try and find a symmetry for each symmetry of the vertex figure. So 
Let's answer our question, how many symmetries of a cube Well, there's eight classes. Each class has size six. Eight times six is 48. Okay, and I challenge you to figure out just by looking at the picture what geometrically what all 48 symmetries are. Some of them are easy. Some of them we've already seen. Some of them are fiendish. I, I can't imagine them really myself. So it's it's quite difficult. So, challenge. I want you to figure out the number of symmetries for each of these shapes. First of all, a regular tetrahedron. So this is for those who play Dungeons and Dragons, this is a d4, four-sided die. It's got four equilateral triangle faces. Um, next, uh, an octahedron. This is a d8, eight-sided die. It's got eight equilateral, equilateral triangle faces. Try and draw it like that. Um, and then two more. That I'm not going to try and draw the dodecahedron and the icosahedron. These are respectively the d12 and d20, the 12 and 20 sided dice. The dodecahedron has 12 pentagonal faces and the icosahedron has 20 triangle faces. Okay, and they're all, I'm talking about the regular solids here. Okay, that's first. Second, those are the easy ones. So second, there are solids called Archimedean solids. So these guys that we've just been talking about are the platonic solids, are the regular solids, named after Plato. So these ones are named after Archimedes. Um, so... For these regular solids, every face is the same, every vertex is the same. For the Archimedean solids, the faces can be different as long as every vertex looks the same. So, rather than tell you what they are, there's, there's quite a few of them, some like 14 or something. Um, I don't remember exactly. Uh, so, look them up on, on like Wikipedia and find out what they look like. And what are they? And then see if you can figure out how many symmetries they have for each of them. I'm sure you can find the answer on Wikipedia, but the question is, can you calculate it using what we've already said, and do you agree with Wikipedia? So that's the, uh, the challenge.